So, Ark Survival Ascended is now out, and you might be thinking about getting into it, but it's a pretty daunting game, right? Well, that's no problem. That's exactly why I put this guide together, actually. So, here's what we'll be covering. A basic how to start guide, including an explanation of the UI and controls, server selection plus events, maps, a quick word on PvP, and a couple general tips. I don't know what your experience level is or how you want to play the game, so feel free to skip around those sections if they are not relevant to you. But before we actually get into the guide proper, there is one thing I want to explain. Simply put, don't look too much shit up. Now that's ironic coming from a guide, right? But the point of this guide is to give you the absolute basic building blocks so that you can go from there and learn how to play the game yourself. Everyone I've ever spoken to that has played Ark Survival Evolved speaks very fondly of their first time ever playing and figuring out how the game works. So do yourself a favor and try to experience that for yourself. I mean, I'm not your dad or anything, right? You can do whatever you want, but that's just a little bit of advice from me. So with that out of the way, we cover the elephant in the room. What do you actually do in ARK? Well, it's a sandbox game, so more or less whatever you want. Just have fun, that's literally the entire goal. There's no objectives, there's no quest markers, there's no jobs you have to get done. You just go out there and you do whatever the hell you want. Now there are bosses and difficult tasks that you can accomplish if you want, but most people don't even bother with that. My best comparison would be to Minecraft. You can go and fight the Ender Dragon, but really, what percent of people bother with that? It's more fun if you just build your world and dick around with your friends. So, with that out of the way, let's get into the guide proper. When you first load into a server, this is the screen you'll be greeted by. Your create a character screen. You can make a pretty outlandish character with these, so go ahead and experiment and just make something that you like. Only thing is to keep in mind, in PvP, the size of your hitbox scales directly with the size of your character, and there are no benefits for making a large character. So in my case, I decided to model the character after myself, and uh, gotta say, I did a pretty good job. So with that done, you're just gonna go ahead and press create, and then you'll be taken to this screen, the spawn in screen. Anytime you die, you'll be taken here. So now we're just gonna go ahead and choose a nice easy spawn at South 1, and now we wake up on the beach. So let's just go ahead and run through the UI here really quick. On the bottom right, we have your stats. This one's your XP meter. When that's full, you have a level up available. The cross is your health. Then the lightning bolt is your stamina. Your food is this delicious looking little ham. The water drop is your water. And this not quite dumbbell is your weight. And if you're underwater, you also have this one, which represents your oxygen. On the bottom, these little black bars here are your hotbar slots. And this just lets you take stuff out of your inventory without having to open the inventory itself. If you're using a controller, however, these are a little different. Because you don't have quite as many inputs as a keyboard, in order to access the second half of the hotbar, you have to first hold down another button and then press the button assigned to the hotbar slot. On PlayStation, this is L1, and on Xbox, I believe this is LB. Now moving forward, for most controls, I'm just gonna say what they are in PC, and unless there's something special you need to do in console, um, I'm not gonna mention it, so just check down at the bottom right here, next to the PlayStation Xbox symbol, that'll have what I think should be the correct button for it. So go ahead and press I to get into your inventory, and this is what you'll see. On your left side here, you will have your inventory, crafting, and cosmetics tabs that you can cycle between. In the middle is all of the armor you have equipped, and right under that, is your level ups. Below that is a show stats tab that'll show any currently active buffs and debuffs that your character has. And to the right of that is just your character. Looking good, Albert. Now in terms of getting experience for a level up, this is just acquired at a slow rate through being alive, harvesting, killing, and crafting. And obviously, harder things to kill and craft will give you more. Now you can see right now we currently have one level up. So let's just go ahead and put that straight into health. We get a small boost in our health and then we're taken to the engrams screen. Engrams is basically just your blueprints, the things that you know how to craft. Now seeing as we only just gotten one level up, we're only able to learn a couple blueprints, but these are important ones. So let's go ahead and learn the spear and stone hatchet. Leveling up gives you a certain amount of engram points. You know, the higher level you are, the more you'll get. And you're able to use these to learn recipes. The system is designed in a way that one person cannot learn every engram. However, this isn't really something you should worry about. There's a lot of kind of empty, stupid engrams you don't need to learn. With one character, you'll be perfectly fine learning everything you need. So looking at the top here, we have some further tabs to explore. 
Going to the next one, we have your tribes tab. On the left, you have all the members and it shows if they're online or offline. In the middle is the tribe log that shows everything important that happens. Someone dies, destroys a structure, or tames a new creature. It'll end up right here. And on the right is the rules for your tribe, plus a tab for any alliances you might have. Next tab over, we have a tracking list. Pretty simple lets you track things that you are currently taming. And the next tab over we have is for all the explorer notes you have collected. You'll be able to find these little ruins, usually with some boxes inside of them. Collect these boxes, they give you a note, and it progresses the lore of the world. All the ones you have found will be held right here. And next we have your map. I really do not need to explain that to you. I'm sure you know what a map does. Just worth noting, it'll start off empty, and as you explore, it'll fill in. Okay, let's go ahead and just press escape to close on out of that, that is enough tabs for the rest of my lifetime. Let's get into some gameplay, shall we? So here we are, we're in the middle of nowhere, on the beach, having fun. And I got pretty lucky because nothing is trying to eat me right now. Let's upgrade our gear a little bit. First things first, we're gonna need to get tools. That's what separates humans from the animals around us, more or less. So let's focus on getting that first. In terms of actually moving your character around, it's very standard. WASD to move around, space to jump, left click to attack. Simple controls that you already know. Crouch is C and prone is X. The absolute first thing you're gonna need to do is find these kind of specific types of rocks. They actually are kind of hard to see because there's a lot of rocks on the beach, but you need to find these big, sort of more squarish ones. Basically try to find a big rock that looks a little bit off. You can then walk right up to this rock and press E to pick it up. Now it'll be deposited right into your inventory. Perfect. And you can even see on the left side of your screen, you've gotten plus one rock. Good job. Next thing, we're gonna need some thatch and wood. So we can just walk right up to a tree and like this is Minecraft, we can just start punching it. Granted, this is going to hurt a little bit, so keep that in mind. But unless you're already really hurt, this shouldn't kill you. So just keep punching until you've got 10 thatch and one wood. You go ahead and open into your inventory, go to crafting and find the stone hatchet. So go ahead and press E on it and you can see it appear right in your crafting queue. And as soon as that's done, it'll appear right into your inventory. Let's go ahead and put that in the hot bar so we can easily retrieve it. There's two main ways to do this. You can either click on it and drag it over to the slot you want it in, or you can double click on it and that will put it on the closest empty slot from the left. At any rate, we go ahead and exit back out the inventory, again using escape, and then we pull the pickaxe out. Seeing now that it's an actual tool and not our fists, we have a lot more luck taking this tree down and we don't have to hurt ourselves in the process. Also, we now have unlocked the ability to mine rocks. And you'll notice now we've gotten a piece of flint. Using this flint and again, one wood and 10 thatch from that tree we just knocked down, we were able to craft a stone hatchet. And these right here are the two basic tool types that you'll use pretty much across the entire game, a pickaxe and a hatchet. These can both be used on the exact same thing, right? You can chop a tree with a pickaxe and you can mine a boulder with a hatchet. And neither of them is actually worse for the task. They'll just give you different resources. So depending on what you wanna get from that rock, you're gonna use either a pickaxe or a hatchet. And this exact same principle applies to all materials in the game that can be gathered with the hatchet or pick. I'll leave the specifics up to you to find out for yourself. Okay, well now we've got two tools, but we've got a little bit of a problem. I've just chopped down two giant trees and smashed up a boulder. I'm getting pretty hungry. So let's walk up to a nearby bush and just start pressing E on it. Your character will start gathering it and they'll get berries and fiber. A good thing to know with Ark Survival Evolved is that hunger is never really an issue. It's more of just an annoyance. These bushes are everywhere. They give you a lot of berries and no preparation needs to be done to them before you can eat them. This isn't daisy, there's no luck involved with your survival. Anytime you're hungry, just find a bush. That's not to say there aren't other food sources in the game that are better, just that berries will stop you from literally starving to death. These bushes have also given me some fiber, which we will use in a second. So now we've picked enough berries to feed my fat, disgusting blob of a stomach. Let's go ahead and once again open the inventory, and then we'll see we've got a wide selection of berries. It is worth noting that some of these have special properties and aren't always necessarily the best thing to eat. Have fun figuring that one out for yourself. Once you have decided you want to eat something, you just hover over it and press E. Now again, individual berries don't provide a lot of hunger, so we're just gonna go ahead and eat a good amount of them. And you can see my hunger is starting to slowly fill up. However, these berries are doing only a little bit for my water. Luckily, water is even easier than food in this game. All you have to do is walk up to any source of water, press E to drink from it, and that's it. 
You don't need to clean it. Even, you know, you can drink the dirtiest swamp water you want. Your character will not get sick from that. Okay, so now we've got basic tools. We know how to use our inventory and we've eaten some food. But my fat little character is feeling pretty embarrassed walking around with his shirt off. So let's see if we can make one. Having leveled up from crafting the hatchet and pickaxe, we once again spend that level and then use the engram points to learn cloth armor. With that done, we go back to our crafting tab in our inventory. We find the cloth hat, shirt, and pants. Luckily, these only cost fiber, which we've just gotten from picking bushes basically for free. So we go ahead and craft all three of these up. Once these are done crafting, all you have to do is just double click on them and the game will automatically place them into the correct slots of your character. If you're a psychopath, you can't just drag and drop them, but there's literally no reason to do that. And as you can see right there, our armor, heat resist, and cold resist have all gone up. I don't need to tell you this, but I'm going to anyway, because why not? But cloth armor isn't the best armor in the game. You can certainly get a lot better than this. That's the basics right there. So let me just give you a couple more controls that I would hate for you to miss out on. Holding T opens up your radial wheel. Now this is mostly whistles to control your tame dinos, but it also has the emotes tab. And mouse wheel is used to go in and out of third person. And the K button is used to enter what is called orbit cam, where you can kind of look around at your character. Um, you can actually use this while you're moving around too. So if you're tricky, you can use this to your advantage. For consoles, again, because controllers don't have as many buttons, you actually have a second radial wheel, which is accessed by holding these buttons. You'll find a couple options here, but the most important ones are third person and orbit cam. Now when, not if, but when you die, you'll first be taken, of course, to the respawn screen where you'll choose a spawn point. As soon as you spawn in, you'll see this marker that has been automatically generated for where your dead body is. Simply make your way back to that marker and grab your stuff and you're good to go. You have 30 minutes to do this, which is a lot of time to just go back and grab your stuff. And there's no penalty for dying if you actually retrieve your items. All you've lost is a little bit of time. So basically what this means is if you die, don't worry about it. It's really not a big deal. Just go back and grab your stuff again and that's it. It is however worth noting that dinos cannot respawn. So if those die, you have actually lost something. As for actually taming dinos, again, I'll let you figure that out on your own. It's so much more fun when you tame the first couple ones with no idea what you're doing. And all I'll say is that in order to tame most dinos, you need to knock them out. So there you have it. That's all I'm going to teach you. You know how to make tools, your first set of clothes, find food, and drink water. The rest is up to you to find out. If you ever find yourself lost and don't know what to do, just try looking at your most recently unlocked engrams and use that as sort of a goal or as something you should be aspiring towards getting. This method doesn't always apply, but you know, it's a good like rule of thumb. All right, so you know how to play the game. Now you've got to actually join a server. And all servers for the game can be broken down into roughly three types. Official, unofficial, and single player. Official servers are the ones managed by Wildcard, the developers of the game. These have default rates. Now what are rates? Rates is just short term for things like harvest rate, breeding rate, taming rate. It just determines how much of a resource you get and how quickly something is done. So for example, on a server with 1x rates, you might get 20 wood from a tree. Whereas on a server with 5x rates, you would get 100 wood from that tree. For the majority of the time, official servers are run at 1x rates, meaning nothing is boosted. There are also a lot of these servers and you can transfer between almost all of them, meaning you can move your characters and tames and items in between them. Because these servers are taken care of by the developers of the game, they run on pretty decent hardware, they don't crash that often, and there's no chance of them just turning off and then never turning back on again. They're also fairly popular. In terms of the downsides of these servers, the moderation team is very weak. It's not that hard to get away with cheating and n-bombs fly freely through chat. Now official servers come in three varieties. Normal official servers, which play very normally. Small tribe servers, where the maximum tribe size is six and rates are two and a half X, or Arcpocalypse, which wipes every 30 days, meaning every character, item, and tame is reset, and has triple rates. Now, unofficial servers. These are servers simply hosted by anybody that isn't wildcard that you can join. The very nature of these servers makes it hard to describe them because they're not one big group, but I'll do my best anyway. In terms of rates, while there are a few that are near official rates, most of them tend to be higher 
sometimes much higher, even 10, 20, 30x servers. They tend to have more active moderating teams, but this is not always a good thing. One of the servers I played on previously, no, sh no joke, had a member that somebody else had literally caught and provided video evidence of them cheating and they were still on the mod team. In an instance like that, it just would be better to have no mods at all, right? And because it's just some random guy hosting the server, there's no accountability. If he decides he doesn't want to pay for the server anymore, that server's gone, and so is everything you had on it. Now, for some of the bigger servers, they'll make what's called a cluster, where they'll host basically a bunch of different servers, and they'll link them together so you can transfer your items and loot across them like on an official server. However, this will never be as big as the official network. That is hundreds and hundreds of servers that can transfer between each other, and for unofficial, this usually does not go above 15 servers you can transfer between. If that's a good or bad thing is entirely up to you. And finally, we have single player worlds. And the first thing to clear up with these is you can have multiple people on these worlds. Single player doesn't actually mean it's just you. It just means a server that you're hosting and playing locally on your own machine. So the biggest upside with these servers is you are able to completely control the server rules to exactly your liking and you can change them at any time. But then again, there's the downside of it being harder to connect with random people. Sure, you can invite your boys to hop on and play with you, but you're not going to meet anyone new that way or even get into big fights, really. So that's the three server types. Now, to complicate things even a little further, there actually are two game modes, PvP and PvE. In PvP, anything is open. You can do whatever you want. You can kill people, blow up their house, take all their stuff, and put them in a cage. Whereas in PvE, you can't do that. You can't damage players, you can't damage their dinos, and you can't take their stuff. Now that's not to say everybody on PvE is nice, they certainly aren't, but they can't directly shoot you in the head and kill you. So that's the more or less objective part out of it. Now we're going to get into my opinion and my recommendations. Personally, no matter what game mode and server you decide to play, I recommend playing on one where the server rates are not too high. If for example, let's say you decided to play on a server with 20x rates, meaning you get 20 times as many resources and things tame 20 times as fast. You're going to skip so much of the early game, which is, in my opinion, the best part. It's going to give you a skewed perspective of what things are worth and how the game actually plays. So I would recommend sticking to low rates because then you get to experience ARC as how it's meant to be played. Now, as for choosing between PvP and PvE, I'm just going to list two groups of games and you tell me which one you like more. At Group A, we have Escape from Tarkov, Rust, and Daisy, Or Group 2, Minecraft, Terraria, and Valheim. If you prefer Group A, then I would heavily recommend PvP, but if you prefer Group 2, I would very much so recommend PvE. Now, assuming you've decided to play PvP, my recommendation would be to choose the official servers. Although you will have to keep your eye out for the cheating issue, unofficials are just simply poorly balanced around PvP. The rates are too high, things don't have value, and killing people and their tames doesn't really mean anything. And also, they're not immune to the cheater problem either, it's just a little bit worse on officials. On a very specific level, I would recommend the Arcpocalypse servers. If you join them at the start of Wipe, it's perfect because it's a fresh slate, everyone's equal, and you just go from there. If you're playing PvE, I would recommend either unofficial server if you want to play with other people, or single player if you just want to play by yourself, which is totally fine to do, there is plenty to do without having to shoot someone in the back of the head. The reason I say this is official servers on PvE have this problem where tribes will just claim all of the land across the entire map using pillars. This wouldn't work in PvP because you could just destroy the pillars, but it's PvE, so they just claim all the land and you literally cannot build a house anywhere. And now we get on to events. And because nothing in this game is simple, there is once again two types of events. The first type is EVO events, and these are pretty simple and only apply to official servers. Usually on the weekends or around Christmas or Halloween or something, they'll throw on what's called an EVO event, and all this does is just boost the harvesting, breeding, and taming rates on official servers. Usually this will be about 1.5 or 2x rates. And then you have seasonal events. Now these are around the major holidays, you know, Christmas, Easter. 4th of July, Thanksgiving, I'm only saying that because I know it's going to piss all the Europeans off, and Halloween. Those are all the ones I can think of off the top of my head. But basically, just at any cool point in the year, they'll basically release like some skins, maybe a couple of variations of some dinos, and some, some variations on the world map. Often, wild dinos will also spawn in with season correct colors, so uh, 
green, red, and white for Christmas, orange and black for Halloween, and so forth. And then they'll allow server owners to turn this on for their servers if they want. So the server owners can choose to not run these events, run these events, or they can even choose to run these events at the wrong time. Nothing like a good Christmas celebration in September, right guys? Official servers always run seasonal events and at the time you would expect. So that's more or less all you need to know about servers and events. I wish it were just a little bit simpler. Now, on to maps. Currently, the game only has one map out, the island. So, if you're watching this while that's still the case, feel free to skip forward to this point. But in effort to give this guide more longevity, I'm now going to discuss the maps as if they are all currently released. Now, you might also be wondering, how am I able to make assessments and judgments on the maps when they're not even out yet? Well, I've played a lot of Ark Survival Evolved, and seeing as this game is just a remaster of that, I already know what the maps are going to be like. Now keep in mind some maps do have exclusive items and creatures that can't be found on other maps and generally the further away from release it gets the more new stuff is going to be in that map. But for the sake of this guide we're just going to go over the general aesthetic and vibe of each map and then I'll rate it based on how good of a map would be to start as your first ever map for Ark Survival Ascended. So first off we have the island. Just a tropical little island. Uh, this is by far the best map to start out as your first one. I mean, it's the first one that came out to the game. It's nice and simple. You can get around. It's pretty easy. And it's also the smallest map. And it sets a good baseline for every other map. Next, we have the center, which is a much bigger map and comprises multiple different islands, with each of them basically being its own distinct biome. There's some cool secrets on this map. I'm not going to spoil those for you. But it is definitely harder to get around and just not as easy. So for that, I'd say a good map to start off on, but not the best. And next we have Scorched Earth. This takes place entirely on a desert. Much more challenging than the island, and also introduces some new items and tames. The gameplay is pretty similar, just a little bit tougher. Not the worst to start off on, but not recommended. Now we have Ragnarok, and as you can probably tell by the name, it tries to go for sort of a Viking Nordic aesthetic. A very, very solid map to start off on. Again, much bigger than the island, but not too challenging, and it's actually just a cool map in general. Then we have Aberration, which takes place almost entirely underground in a cave system. This is commonly accepted as one of the hardest maps in the game, and I would not recommend starting off on it. Now we have Valgaro. Um, this one doesn't really have too much of a theme or aesthetic, but it does have some unique biomes in it that other maps don't. Not super challenging or hard to get around on. Overall, not a bad one to start off on. Extinction. This takes place on a destroyed city and features a lot of new creatures and items that are not in the regular game. Very different from the core arc experience. I very much so would not recommend starting off on this one. Then we have Crystal Isles. This one takes place on an island with very, very bright colors. It goes for a very tropical, very bright vibe. Probably either the easiest or second easiest map on the game. Um, again, not a bad one to start off on. Genesis Part 1. Yes, that is literally what it's fucking called. It's a pretty stupid name. This takes place on five different maps that you teleport between instead of manually walking in between them. Very, 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 very fucking different from the core arc experience. Do not do this as your first one. Fjordor. Um, like Ragnarok, except it goes so much harder into the Nordic Viking aesthetic. This one's actually a little tricky to get into, so I wouldn't personally recommend it. And finally, we have Genesis Part 2, which takes place on a colony ship, and you are given free fucking Iron Man suit as soon as you spawn in. Um, whatever you do, wh anything else, do not start on this one. It will absolutely destroy your perception of how the game is played and what items are worth. So there we have it. Um, ideally choose something from the green that is a vibe and aesthetic that you like. Maybe choose something from the yellow, but avoid the red as your first go. Again, I'm not saying that which map is good and which is bad and which is boring and fun. This is purely just from the perspective of what is the best map to play as your first ever time in Ark Survival Ascended. So, if you're thinking about playing PvP, this section is very important to listen to. In the simplest terms possible, you have to just stop caring when you lose your loot. 
It's going to happen. You're going to get raided. You're going to have your teams killed. You're going to have everything you own stolen and your base is going to be reduced to rubble. And this is only going to be a bad thing for you if you're so concerned about the loot. If you simply stop caring about your loot and the items that you're acquiring and start caring about the fun that you're having and the experiences you're going through, you're not going to care when you get raided. And yeah, this is really corny, overplayed advice, but stop caring about the destination and just worry about the journey. There is no such thing as winning in PvP or ARK in general. There's never going to be a screen that pops up after you kill a thousand guys. It's going to say, congratulations, you have won the arc. In PvP, there is no end goal. Just have fun. And yeah, this is like stupidly simple advice, but so many people get so upset when they get raided because they're, oh, I put so much work in. It's not work, dude. You're, you're hopping on the game to have fun. Don't think about your items and tames as work because then you're, it's like you're just getting robbed every time you hop on and you play the game. And keep in mind, no matter how little or how much you have, people are still going to raid you all the same. They're going to kill you for the sake of killing you, and they're going to raid you for the sake of raiding you. If you get hung up every time something doesn't go your way, you're not going to have fun in PvP. A lot of the times, they think only people that are good at PvP or are in a giant tribe can actually have fun in the game mode. It's not about your skill or how many guys you're with. It's 100% about your mentality going in. If you just don't care when you die and lose your shit, it's literally impossible to not have fun. So, that's it. That's more or less everything you need to know to get a basic start going in Ark Survival Ascended. The game is genuinely a lot of fun, just don't take it super seriously and you'll be fine. And for the last section here, we're just going to go through a couple tips and tricks. None of this is necessary and you can just go off and start playing the game now. But if you want some more help and guidance, feel free to stick around as we go through a couple tips. Generally speaking, the further north and inland you go away from the beach, the more dangerous it's going to get. If you want to stay in the safest place in the game, that's usually right on the beach. Metal is one of the most important resources in the game for building gear that doesn't suck ass. The best place to find it is on mountains, though keep in mind this place is pretty sketchy. Now if for some reason your ancestors did not pass on basic survival instincts, avoid the swamp. You're gonna get fucked here. These are supply drops. They come down from the sky and they have nice loot in them. Grab them when you can. Different colors signify different qualities of loot. The explorer notes I previously discussed way back at the beginning can be found across the map in these little boxes. You get a flat amount of XP that's really quite good at early levels, and it doubles your XP gain for the next 10 minutes. There's only so many of these though, so make sure not to waste that bonus you get. There are many caves across the map that have a lot of challenging enemies and very nice loot inside of them, as well as something else. I wonder what that could be over there. Anyway, caves are kind of more towards the end game, so make sure you have nice gear before you start going into these. Some of the creatures in this game exist just to make your life a living hell. Generally speaking, herbivores will be nicer to you than carnivores, obviously, but that doesn't go for all of them. So just exercise a little caution around things you don't recognize. Alright, that's all. Go out there, have fun, don't take it too serious. Goodbye.